Hi, how are you doing? Um, so I'm sorry that I'm late today. I was feeding my little one again. He seems to have um, started his feeding schedule a little bit later than usual. Um, so today I'm talking to you about how to make your offer irresistible because sometimes you'll be running ads and you'll be doing all the right things but they still don't work and you'll, you might spend like months even going back and forth, like a long, long time, going back and forth, changing things, testing things, um, you know, thinking it's the ad that's wrong, thinking it's the audience that's wrong, um, thinking it's the landing page that's wrong and like in the end it was just the offer that was wrong and this often gets overlooked I think. So what I want to talk about today is how to make your offer irresistible so that you can be absolutely sure that that's not the reason that your ads aren't working basically. Um, so I've just got three three kind of sections that I'll go over today. So first of all, a few things you can check to make sure it's not your ads. Um, secondly, I'll be talking about the <clears throat> like the language you can use and the things you can do in your ads um, and with your ICA. And then lastly, I'll be talking about the actual offer itself. So hopefully um, you guys will find lots of value today. Um, as always, if you're watching on replay, give me a hashtag replay please. And um, if you're watching live, then give me a hello. Um, let me know if you're running any ads at the moment. Let me know if you've got any offers on at the moment. Um, and you know, maybe if you've got any questions, I can give you some real life examples that relate directly to your offer. Um, and last one, I'm just gonna say apologize, apologies for my hair. So today is my last day. Um, tomorrow we are going down south, we're traveling to Bangkok um, so that my little one can finally meet his grandma, his grandmother, granddad, um, Chinese Thai family, and um, all his aunties and uncles. And then we're actually going to Ko Chang Island for 10 days holiday for our birthdays. So I'm very excited, but as always, last day before holiday, I should be relaxing and packing, but instead I'm working on last minute projects and then realize that I'm live today with you guys. So yes, so I do apologize um, for this. But yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, we just want to check then that it's your, that it actually is your offer. So I've done it, um, I've done this before. I'm, I think I did a live training as well. And I've also got a checklist on um, how, on troubleshooting your ads, you know, and seeing what's, um, why your ads aren't working. So, okay, my cat is determined to knock this over. Um, but I'll just like summarize a couple of bits here. So first of all, you wanna check the, hello. Um, you wanna check the click through rate on the ads. So I think in general, regardless of what industry you're in, that you should be aiming for a click through rate of 1% upwards so if you're getting like 0.34% 0.4% then definitely take a look at your ads um, and just keep tweaking things just only ever test two things at a time you know test one version against another and then always you're just beating yourself each time and then when you know which one's the winner switch the other one off and then start a new one you know test your headline then your copy then your image test the button and so on um, another, another thing you can be looking at is the quality ranking so the quality ranking um, is probably something lots, many people don't look at and it's not very clear either. You just have below average, average or above average. Um, and what it is, is, Facebook looks at the amount of positive and negative feedback that you get. So if people, for example, hide your ad and say, I don't want to see this, or if you don't get many likes or if you get angry faces and things like that, then your quality ranking is going to be low. Um, so you need to be looking at that and it will just give you an indication of how your ad is performing. Um, and another one is look at clicks, but then also look at landing page views. So if lots of people have clicked, but then you've, so you've got lots of clicks, you think, oh, um, link click, sorry, not just any click, link click. It's really important that you only look at link click for this. Um, so yeah, link click compared to the amount of people who have, oh wow, it's starting to rain, <laughs> I think. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so link clicks compared to the people who have actually viewed your landing page. If there's a gap between that, then it could mean that your landing page is actually too slow. Um, so it's your landing page that you need to look at rather than anyone else. Um, hiya, let me know who's watching, say hello, um, hopefully I'll be able to see you on the comments. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh yeah, and then finally, if you've got your tracking set up on Google Analytics, um, and if you've got the pixel set up properly, then you should be able to work out your landing page conversion. So look at the number of people who land on your landing page compared to the number of people who convert. And if this, oh hi Lee, how are you? 
Um, and if, there's, if it's low, then that's when you know it's either your landing page or your offer because you know that the ad is right, the ad is already working. So there, th then that's when you know you're in the right area. You need to focus on them things. And if your landing page, if you know, if you've done all the changes, if, you've, um, you, know, if you know it's optimised, if you know it's up to scratch, then there's a good chance that the only reason your ads aren't working is because your offer isn't right. So that's what we'll talk about today. Um, right, so let's just say we go past that point and you know, now you know that you're, um, you know it's the offer. So I'll talk about like things you can do with actual language. I'll hide my book here so I'm not constantly looking behind me at my notes. Um, right. So yeah, so first of all, one thing that you can do when you're writing your ad copy is you can, um, you can talk about yourself and then ref compare yourself to your competitors. So the chances are, when you're running ads to people, um, they, they, they've they seen a different version of you, which is, cat, stop trying to move my tripod. <laughs> um, they've probably seen lots of other people out there, like you, selling the same thing. So this is why you've got to make it absolutely clear that you are not the same as them. Um, they're, they're, yeah, they may be selling the same thing, like the similar name, similar whatever, but you have to make it clear to your audience why you're different and why your offer isn't the same as their, why it's better, why you're better basically. Um, obviously don't call out your competition, don't be like, oh yeah, so-and-so is doing the same as me, um, and they're rubbish, <laughs> like you don't do that. But just, just make it clear about like why you are, why you are the person and the one they need to go with. Um, when you're writing your ad copy, think about doing, like think about working on different angles. So. Um, if you think about what your product solves, actually I'm going to have to move because it is raining, it started raining. I was scared, I thought I was going to get eaten by mosquitoes, but instead I'm just going to get rained on. Right, I'm just going to move. It should be fine. Right, I, should be, I should be okay here, I think. Yeah, so think about what your think about what your um, what your offer solves, and think about why anyone would want to buy it. Now, there's never just going to be one reason why someone wants to buy your offer, your offer or service. So, for example, with me, if I'm offering a Facebook ad service, I might be offering it to people to save them money, save them money from an agency, or I might be offering it to save them time because I'm going to provide like um, templates or something. So. Um, <clears throat> You need to think of all the different reasons people might want your offer or your product or service and then have different ads which are actually sculpted around those reasons so that if someone doesn't like one thing you're talking about, the chances are you can hook him in with another one. Um, and that does kind of go into one of the video strategies I teach, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, I think I've mentioned it quite a few lives, so I will mention it again in the future. But and another example, for example, if you if you uh if you do, if massage is your thing you know if you provide massage as a service think people um people might want massage for pain relief or they might want it to relieve stress they're like completely different things or they might just want it because it's a um <clears throat> it's a what's the word it's like a not culture but it's people do it <laughs> because it's like oh yeah i've got money i've i want a massage so i can you know, there's lots of different reasons that people might want to have a massage. So if you cover all of those different reasons, then it's going to help attract them to your offer, basically, because one of them reasons is going to be the reason that they want it, basically. So that's another thing. So use different angles in the ads. Um, oh, hi, Leah. How are you? Um, right. So next one is right. So think about what what it is your what what it is you're selling. What is your offer and Think about what is the sort of famous way of doing it. What is the way that everyone thinks that they should do it, but maybe they're wrong. So, for example, in my case, it might be everyone thinks you should run, I don't know, uh, everyone thinks you should boost posts because it's like cheap and you can reach loads of people and get loads of likes. But I know that that's not the right way. So what I need to do is when I, when I teach something or when I want to sell my offer or service, I'll say, this is what everyone thinks is the right way to do it but I know that that's not the right answer and in what I'm selling you I teach a different way and that's why you should buy that basically so you're you're showing them that the reason that they have failed in the past they've tried hasn't worked in the past because 
that everyone thinks is the right way, but really you know the better way. And then, so you... Yeah, actually, do you know what, Leah? I live in Thailand. Like, when we get to the beach next week, I'm literally going to go and have to do it. Maybe get some baby massage for Bua, <laughs> if, he, um, if he can keep quiet for, keep still for long enough. Um, right, so another thing you should be saying is why you need to call out to your audience when you're talking to them and show them the why why what they've done in the past is wrong but also but don't make them feel stupid and be like yeah you've been doing that you're stupid you're totally wrong you've like if you're sympathetic with them say look it's not your fault the industry teaches you that this is how you should do it but i know as the expert that you should actually do it this way and then you're making them realize that they're not just going to be buying into an offer or a service that they you know that they think they've tried already they're like oh i did that before and it didn't work like how many people have come to me and said i tried facebook ads it didn't work i'm like yeah but you tried it that way <laughs> like you didn't try it this way um <clears throat> by the way i'm not trying to sell facebook ads in this live at all um <laughs> if anything i want less work at the moment i'm so busy with um <clears throat> with boa mainly um so yes why why they failed and, the, and then of course just in general always when you're talking to your audience you're looking at their pain points <clears throat> and why are you going to solve their specific pain points with your product or service basically. So that's everything I want to say on the language ICA pack. So again, I talk about ICA all the time. Um, sorry, I do apologize. ICA just means ideal client avatar. So it's when you think about the perfect person. That's literally. Um, <clears throat> so third part. I was just talk about the actual offer itself. Sorry, I feel like I'm rushing through this. Are oh, you more than welcome, Leah? Um, I feel like I'm rushing through this, but I'm scared that the heavens are gonna open and I don't wanna go inside because it's dark and yeah, and we're packing and trying to get our lives together and stuff ready to move. So, right, the offer itself. So it's really important that when you've got an offer or, you know, when you're offering a service or a product <clears throat> that you don't just you know, call it by its generic industry term and throw it out there. Like it has to have a catchy name, something that people are going to remember or a name come in it. So when they listen to the name, they know what the outcome of that is going to be. Or if it doesn't have the outcome, then if it's got like the process in it, so they know what the offer involves doing or something like that. You can be clever with it. You can use like alliteration, like mine could be, I don't know, what would Soph's? So, I don't know, splendid Facebook ad scores. That was really, really bad. Ignore me. I should have planned that. <laughs> That's really bad. But um, yes, yeah, so it's got to have a catchy name. Um, it's got to look VIP. So, even if it's a really cheapy offer, even if you're just selling something, like you know, when you see ads for a book and they give the book away for free and then you get free shipping, like even then, people don't come, they, sorry, and then you pay for the shipping, but the book's free, I mean. Like even then, it's not even got that much of a high conversion rate because people are still scared to money, scared to spend money from an ad because it's cold, isn't it? It's cold selling. It's a cold audience. Like obviously, if you're running ads properly, you should be warming up, selling, retargeting. But even then, like I, I see ads sometimes. I'll have been following someone on ads for maybe like three to six months, and it's about I don't know a year later that I eventually buy from them. So. You have to make it, this is why it's really important, it's got to be irresistible. They've got to be like, whoa, that's way too good to be true. Um, oh, that reminds me, I didn't... Okay, my cat has just knocked over a mattress. I really hope it's not squashed under it. Refaz! <sighs> Stupid cat. Oh my God. Um, I thought he was squashed under the mattress then. Um the mattress just got knocked over by the cat okay sorry about that that really scared me i thought this was a flat cat fat cat not flat cat okay so um right so the yeah it has to be branded it has to look good um one thing i've just remembered which i didn't put down in my notes was you have to make it urgent so it has to have like a deadline you have to make it clear that the offer is not going to be there forever um because if they think it's going to be there forever, then they'll just put it off and they'll be like, oh yeah, I'll, um, I'll think about that tomorrow, I'll look into it more. But if you like, it's got a dead end, it ends at midnight, it ends in 48 hours or whatever it is, then it makes people look, um, take action. And the faster they take action, the less time they've got for their brains, the, 
the non-compulsive part of the brain, the sensible part, to talk them out of buying it. Like, <laughs> it's basically the equivalent of like my husband telling me not to buy something. It's my brain two, three days later when I've had time to digest it. So yeah, it's got to have urgency. Um, the next one is it has to have a tangible result. Now, if for example I'm selling a funnel, it's it is tangible kind of because it's a funnel. It's like something that works, but um, it doesn't you don't hold it you can't hold it and smell it it's not got a color um but what you should do when you're creating your offer is you should create images even if it's a digital product and it's not got it's not tangible um you should create images to make it look tangible so even if like something that a lot, a lot of people do is they put a photo a picture of a laptop or a phone screen like that and they put screenshots of what the course looks like inside so if you're selling a course for example you can show what's inside it and just this comes back to the making it look vip making it look good it has to look good um but once they see that people are like like 50 to 100 percent more likely to buy it because they see what's inside it you're not just giving it a name it's not just like my something program and they're like well what is this program is it just a group where we can talk is it like a course with modules and when people get that actual visual like they can see it visually then it just has such higher conversion rates so yeah it's got to be tangible um my next point is it has to have an irresistible price so you might not like this one i don't like it either um because you can work your ass off for a year on something and then have to sell it for such a low price but if you're doing it on ads it has to be with it has to be lower than like 40 dollars even if you would sell that for like 300 quid normally but it just makes it irresistible because people see the value you have to show them the value um and even inside that you need to also give loads and loads of bonuses as well and the more different types of bonuses you can give the better so don't just have like 10 checklists but have like one checklist one or a sound of file one mini video series have one have like a little black book of something like your secret shortcut to whatever like different types of um bonus in there and then people like i don't know it just makes it look so much more colorful you know it makes people just think oh they cannot say no to that because all of that is included in that one price as well and all of these things built up together are just making it irresistible you look at that and you're like well one of these things alone is going to be worth like so much money it's going to save me so much time so even if just one of the things you offer just one of the features or bonuses can save someone an hour then you've made them back that money. The price of what you're selling has already free for them basically because you've saved them time, which is valuable. So once you put all of these things together, it just makes it irresistible, especially if you can give each of the bonuses that you can offer, give each of those a value, add it all up, list them with their values together with the value of the thing that you're really undervaluing by giving a low price but give the original values and all add them all up and it's going to be worth like thousands or well no hundreds to a thousand maybe thousand five hundred and then you're selling it for like less than 40 quid and people are just like i have to buy it now because the offer's ending at midnight um i saw recently an ad that had offer um this offer ends in a day and i looked at the comments so there were comments from like 12 weeks ago on there and they were still running the ad they were still selling it me being me and a cheeky fecker i commented and said oh so when what what day at midnight does this end because i can see comments here from like you know weeks ago um i didn't get a i didn't get a response oh no i shouldn't have commented but they shouldn't have targeted me i wasn't their target audience um that's another story but <clears throat> Yeah, so that was literally all of the things I wanted to say. Again, I'm really sorry if I've rushed through that. Um, I hope you found value. Again, if you've got any questions, you know, your own offers, if you're running your ads that aren't working, um, let me know if you want a second look over anything. I'm always happy to help. Um, so next Tuesday, the lovely Leah is actually going to be in this group. Um, talking about how you can boost your self image to live the life you dream of basically so that's really exciting and my next live in two weeks um, I think I'm talking about different types of Facebook ads funnels um, I'm actually going to be filming from Ko Chang so you'll see me from the beach hopefully um, <clears throat> yes so that's been wonderful thank you so much for tuning in again if you watch on replay let me know with the hashtag replay 
Um, and otherwise, I will see you very soon.